So now that we've spent a bit of time looking at the overall heart itself and looking at sort of the, the various pulmonary and systemic circuits that we see within the heart, I now want to zoom in a little bit more and I want to have a look now at cardiomyocytes. So cardio, uh, and this is something that's going to be emphasized a lot in this course. So cardio means heart, myo means muscle, and site means cell. So cardiomyocyte basically translates into heart muscle cell. Now, there are a couple of key features that you really need to be aware of in terms of the microscopy of a cardiomyocyte. Now, there, within this course, we're going to keep it to three main things. The first one is our desmosomes. Now, what a desmosome is, and that's what we can sort of see over here, I want you to think of it as almost like Velcro. And that is that these are sort of interlocking sort of junctions that hold it together because the heart is beating and then relaxing constantly. The last thing we want to happen is that when your um, heart rate, you know, increases or say the, the forcefulness of the heart and how it beats uh, increases, the last thing that we really want to happen is that your heart kind of rips itself apart. So what the desmosomes do is that they sort of structurally reinforce and hold it together. The next one is called a gap junction, and this one is very important, and we're going to be discussing that in our next series of videos. And what a gap junction does is it allows various ions to move between these cells. Now, if you're not aware what an ion is, it is essentially an atom or an element that contains a charge. So these are things like sodium, potassium, chlorine, um, these sorts of, of ions here. And what this does is, is that it's a little sort of hold and it allows it to move through um, from one side to the other of, of two uh, like, um, uh, adjacent heart cells. And the last one is an interdigitating fold. Now, what this is, is that it inc essentially increases the surface area, allows these cells to interlock, sort of embeds within the sarcolemma. So it allows us to um, get more calcium, which again is going to be very important with what we're going to discuss in our next series of videos. Now, there are some interesting properties of our cardiomyocytes or our cardiac muscle tissue when we compare it to the other two being skeletal and smooth muscle. Now, cardiac muscle is obviously involuntary, so you can't turn around to your friends and go, hey, watch me flex my heart. You know, you, you, can't, you can't just choose to constrict or relax your heart like we can with, say, skeletal muscle. If we do, uh, to compare some of our, some of our slides here, this, the appearance and shape, the best way to sort of look at it, and this is how I sort of look at it, is that it looks like bamboo, and that is that it is sort of branching strands that kind of overlap each other. So not only do these cells like overlap each other, sort of like bamboo, um, they also have a very unique um, composition intracellularly, so inside the cell, and that is that they have around 20% more mitochondria than any other cell. And this is simply because the heart is working constantly. The heart is constricting and relaxing constantly, meaning that it needs a very, very reliable source of energy. And to sort of wrap up our series here is, uh, I wanna talk just very, very, very briefly about um, fetal development of the heart because there are two structures here that I just want to bring to your attention. Now, the first one here is the foramen ovale. And what that does is it essentially is a hole in the interatrial septum. And uh, this is also known as like a hole in the heart. And what this does is that in fetal development, the lungs are one of the last things to develop. So there's no point in sending blood sort of to the, the right ventricle to sort of go up and go to the lungs because, well, baby can't breathe at the moment. So what it will happen is that the blood will actually go from the right atria and go through this foramen ovale into the left atrium here. Now this closes up uh, during childbirth um, and when the, the baby begins to breathe for itself. And the last one is our ductus arteriosus. In the same way, like the uh, during this fetal development, um, obviously baby doesn't have lungs yet and we don't want to send blood to the lungs. What is happening here is that obviously this is a little bit of more developed structure, is that with the, with the blood, it will go from the right atria to the right ventricle through our pulmonary semilunar valve. But once we hit the pulmonary trunk, there's actually a little duct here. So it will essentially go straight through into the aorta and then through the rest of the body because in a fetus, the primary area in which the blood is oxygenated is not the lungs because they don't exist yet, okay? It's in the placenta. Guys, so that's it. Thank you very much for joining me for our first uh, sort of first set of vi uh, video series. We've covered a lot into the heart, the heart contracting and pushing blood. What we're going to do next series is focus a lot more on how the heart is able to achieve this. So thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you next time.